All right. Hello, folks. Once again, we are here to complete. Well, complete. We are here to finish another two robot masters before the night is over. And I said we were gonna do Pharaoh Man, so God damn it, we're gonna do Pharaoh Man. First thing to note: Actraiser music. This ROM hacker has my uh, has my heart. And Pharaoh Man stage gimmick would probably piss off like everybody else who played this except for me, or maybe just a few select people. His gimmick is curses. What do these do? This one reverses your controls, including start and select, up and down. So you have to hold up the slide. Then we have hopping, which makes you lose control of your jump and makes you essentially just hop around whenever. And then there's areas where there's no curse at all and you feel very free. Those aren't very, very, very common in this level though. And we have up and downs that are going down and then up in that one area and then all sorts of messed up here. Look at that. Down and up right there, huh? I suppose. And they blow up for some reason. Quite extravagant for an enemy of that kind, but whatever. And god damn it, I should have climbed the ladder safely. Not been an idiot. And you fall into a desert and fight what appear to be. I don't know actually. Oh, and those aren't the only curses, by the way. There's multiple. There's a bit more. We have Berserker, which makes you just fire randomly. Which is really bad if you had a special weapon equipped at this point, because you'd probably friggin' waste all of it. And then we have Roulette, which, well, take a friggin' guess. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh. Right, that happens when Jump Big hits you, by the way. So just wait here for him to slowly jump forward. And he'll fall. Hopping again, good. So can I switch back? Yes, I can. Minimum, check this out. You can only have one shot on the screen at once, and they move ludicrously slow. How nice is that one? And we have fidget, which makes you just uncontrollably fidget forward, I suppose. And slipping, which makes you slide. Which is really bad, because it combines itself with reverse, and that happens. And you get stuck in a small bit of a loop unless you're careful. Now, here you go, you ready? Uh-oh. He didn't like that. Surprisingly enough, he didn't punch me in the face, but you know, I, I think that'll be later, I guess. And then Berserker kicks in again, and Ladybugs start kicking my butt ass for some reason here. And now we're in a fire segment, because, you know, yeah. The recorder makes it kind of hard to see the fire. The flicker isn't displayed as good as it should be. Hence what just happened. How inane. Truly a tragedy. Oh no. Keep moving! Alright, there we go. Oh! Oh, I gotta show off the Bright Man weapon, right. Well, you shoot a light bulb that explodes. You can actually hold it out in front of you. Like so. And it can hit things. And you can also do another thing with it. Freeze time for a brief moment by holding up and shooting. But now we can also quick change with Player 2's uh, A and B buttons. On the controller mapping, we'll let you quick change weapons as well. Oh, oh, I got hit. There's an E-Tank down there. Should I go for it? You know... I don't think that's a good idea. But we're gonna do it. There we are. I got hit, but it's alright. And now next up, we have another boss. Mini boss, sorry. This is the third time I fought Shadow Man in a row in a stage, actually. Kinda funny, all three of these stages in this boss order have Shadow Man as a mini boss. And now he uses various ninja pellets that do various things. That one shoots a wave of water at you at a very fast speed. That one summons a large fire pillar. The red one, of course. 
And is he gonna use the other one or not? It doesn't look like it. Oh, don't let him get you if he does that or else you'll actually instantly die. That white one causes a shield. And goodbye, Shadow Man. And my controls are reversed. How beautiful. Oh, right. Select would be start now. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. God. Yeah, this level isn't very good. <laughs> Not when you don't have a lot more weapons than I do, or at least a lot more useful ones. Dive mans in particular, but... Well, we'll not complain. I did this to myself. Dive Man's weapon is very useful here because Dive Man's weapon actually instantly kills fire based enemies. Oh, hey, you can kill those! I didn't actually think you could. Interesting. Just like the ones in Mega Man 1, kind of. Actually, it is just like the ones in Mega Man 1. That's a strategy. You can shoot before. And the good news is, Shadow Man is gone. Don't worry about him anymore. Unless you have to game over and get a continue. Or, yeah. Wait for this to fall down so it's a bit... Oh, you... Mm. Man, I could feel that almost being near the end there. That was was a good feeling. Okay, these enemies bother me. I'm turning that off before I get the Berserker, though. What? The Berserker... It, oh, must have glitched out. I ain't... I ain't gonna complain. Made me take less damage. That's nice. Oh, shoot. Let's not fall into that. I have the feeling this could take longer than Toad Man, but it might not. Stage itself isn't really as long, it's just more difficult than anything. I think this one's the hardest stage itself, but Toad Man is a. Actually, honestly, I can't really tell you who the hardest boss in this is, because they're all very difficult. And, okay, reverse controls, gotcha. Ah, oh, there we are. And now we have Fidget. And, oh, dear. And it's the boss room and we're still slipping. All right. Fetter is an interesting curse in that it just makes you unable to move uh, forward. Shoot, jump. So Pharaoh Man misses his Pharaoh slap, or maybe it was a punch, I don't know. And then Pharaoh Man is not satisfied with this. He is about to send you flying up back to the beginning of the stage. So, let's see how effective Spark Man... Spark Man? Wow. I, uh, <laughs> Bright Man's weapon is on him. You know, this weakness chain is surprisingly working, and I'm... I'm a bit surprised. Uh-oh, here's where he gets a little bit more, uh... complicated. And then you fall! In fact, I would recommend, uh... Nah, I shouldn't. I should let him kill me there. I'll get more health in the end, and it'll probably make it a bit easier. And... teleport! Also, uh, thanks to a certain power-up we have down at the bottom of the screen, our weapon energy gets recharged a bit each time we spawn, so... Oh, whoops, forgot about that one. And then we gotta fall again!
Oh dear. I can't tell what the hell's going on. Oh man. That's just a hard to follow fight. <laughs> ah. Mega Buster. Holy shoot! Whoa! That... that was intense. I like that. And from this we get the... quite fantastically dubbed... Pharaoh Shotgun! I like this weapon, it's actually pretty well... Hey, what's this? Well, the Pharaoh Shotgun's pretty decent. Rush Cannon Adapter. Well, that sounds like a little fun thing to mess around with. But we're back to scratch with zero E-Tanks and zero extra lives. Now, I'm pretty sure after Pharaoh Man... I have to check. Give me one minute. Oops. Alright, after that little inconvenience, we are going to Ring Man. Since I finally remembered who the boss was. And Rigman has one of the most useful weapons in the game, and he's slightly weak to the Mega Buster. Which means if I'd have gone Optimal Run, I would have started with him. And I am just... ...eating it here. Also, I like the Mario Kart music. Oh, ooh, that was close. I suppose I should show off the Pharaoh Shotgun. Now, you can charge it up and have a little orb with you. But the cool thing about this little orb... ...is that... ...even if it disappears... ...you can still fire the gigantic shotgun blast, even if it's not there. So if it, like, it hits a boss or something, and it disappears... ...you can still release the fire button, and the shotgun effect will still come out. So, yeah. Anyways, I think this is Cheese Land from Mario, uh... Kart Super Circuit, I think, for the Game Boy Advance. Pretty fitting for the, uh, pretty trippy background going on here. Hey, some enemies from Metal Man stage! And some weapon energy. And since we have the energy balancer... If you have your no weapon equipped, and it'll just refill the lowest weapon. Which was, conveniently enough, the Pharaoh shotgun. Don't know if that's actually Ringman's weakness. I don't think it is, but it could be. These guys from Mega Man 2, the ones that split, shoot them with a charge shot and they'll go down in one shot. You won't have to worry about their body parts flying around everywhere and hitting you. That was quite a pain in the original Mega Man 2. Omitted here. How thoughtful. And we have Eddie. What are you going to give me? An extra life. Thank you. Now, you might remember this kind of boss. You ever played Kirby? It's low, 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 and la, la, la from Kirby's Dreamland. Also from their own respective game, but that's another story completely. They had a third guy in here, but I guess he wasn't important because he died pretty fast. But yeah, just like the Kirby boss, they push blocks back and forth on planes of uh, 2D movement, and you just shoot them in the back. Although they don't push spikes this time, which in Mega Man would probably be an instant kill, so that's a good thing. Get the train met tools from Charge Man stage. Nice to see them make another appearance. And the springs from the Cossack stages, I believe. Up here we have another Jumbig. Oh, lovely. 
this we can see the Pharaoh shotgun go to use. See, watch, the big orb can hit things and not go away. And then it goes away, and then you can fire off the big blast still. And that, my friends, is how you stop a jump big. Now, you're probably wondering why I picked up a health upgrade, or health rest restoration item, and it went into the Pharaoh shotgun. That is another item the game starts you off with very mercifully. It converts uh, extra life energy into weapon energy. Not as much, though. So it's not gonna, like, convert a full weapon energy bar because you, have a, you picked up a large health and you had full health, so don't get too excited about it. Here we have reflecting quick man lasers, kind of like Shield Sheldon stage from Mega Man X6. There's Arpa's favorite game right there. And I could not get away from that. There is a way to do it, that's gotta be fast. Alright. So now we're gonna try the Pharaoh shotgun. And I think it's just effective overall against any boss, really. Because of its charge properties and stuff. Ringman also doesn't hurt you with contact damage, nicely enough. And there you go, that's Ringman! And marking his defeat, you get one of the most useful items. And you know what? I think I'm going to do a third Robot Master just to show off how broken this weapon is. The HCR Boomerang, as it is called, or the Holdable Control Ring Boomerang, is probably one of the most overpowered weapons in this game. Are you ready to see why? Alright, well, first things first, it does a lot of damage. Second thing, you can hold it there and inflict constant damage on enemies. Thirdly, it can pick up items from a distance, including E-Tanks and 1-Ups. All this while not costing a whole ton of energy for all the purposes it serves, makes it extremely useful in pretty much any situation. That and it does a good deal of damage as well. Yes, like, so, naturally, it, since Wingman is also weak to the Buster a bit, you could start with him and get one of the best weapons in the game. But I decided to start with Toad Man and get one of the more situational ones because, well... Let's make this run interesting, right? Oh. Now here's an area that's interesting. The temperature meter! There you go, careful about that. I think I'm gonna switch to the ring just so I can get through these guys quicker. Look at how good that is. Look at that! You can even hold out two of them! And if you flip that switch up there at the weapon, it unlocks this little area up here. So if you had done this first with Mega Man, you would probably have had to go up there and fight Jumbig for that. Now here's an interesting little thing. Jump at this one. That other one will just push you back way too far to recover. Now here's a room where you're gonna have to work really hard to get through it. Find a good nook and cranny, because if you don't, you'll die. Uh... That was very annoying. 
because that's pretty much the boss room. Right after that's the boss door. I think in here, if you use uh, Brightman's weapon, it'll help out a bit. Yeah, it'll stop them from going as far. And that can create a blockade. That's legitimately hilarious. That's pretty good. And then after enough blocks, the game will eventually just give up. And say you did good, pal. Now, we actually have a weakness in here, but believe it or not, it is not Rigman's. In fact, do not hit Dustman with any weapon besides the Toad weapon, because if you hit him with a weapon when he's inhaling uh, dust, or junk, he will actually regain health. I'm not kidding, he will. So yeah, you just gotta use this when he's inhaling to turn junk into toads, I guess, and that'll clog his thing, and it'll make him unable to... I don't know how this weakness chain works. But that's Dustman's weapon. Got Recycle Inhaler. This is the thing that can trade, uh, weapons... or weapons... enemies... items... for another item, pretty much. So it can suck up an enemy or an item, and it'll exchange it for another random item. Anyways, I think three is a pretty good limit. So next time, since we've done Dustman, we can now go to Skullman. And, funny enough, that is actually one of the official weakness orders that is retained. Dust is actually really effective against Skullman. That's all. Stay fresh, folks, and yeah, that's all I can add. Can't believe I got three done in about 20 minutes, though. <laughs>